So this is our review of the absolutely mental Indian FTR 1200. So stick around, we're gonna be giving you our thoughts on it. So ever since we saw this bike firstly at Intermot 2018, I think it was the October show, we were like instant fans of it. I mean, look at the bike, it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's bringing something totally different to the marketplace in the way it looks. I think it looks really bold. I absolutely love it. Um, we actually followed that up um, with our um, 2019 product launches for Urban Pro shirts and the Handroid Mark IV. We actually managed to get hold of the FTR 750 flat track race winning uh, bike as part of the launch. So it was absolutely fantastic, load of fun. We got it all sideways and stuff on a track. Uh, Rick English driving it and you know it was fantastic and you know what we actually used this bike and we borrowed this bike um, to help launch our 2020 collection so a lot of the photographs that you're going to see for our latest products actually feature this bike so I guess right out of the gate you can say that you know we're fans of the aesthetic I love the way it looks I think it's uh, really bold I think it actually matches some of the products that we do as well so from an aesthetic point and what the bike is about you know, we're just massive fans straight out the gate. And the FTR, honestly, is a totally different motorcycle to anything I've personally ridden before. I, th I think it's quite a unique motorcycle, actually. I think, you know, it's a mixture between street, mixture between sort of like custom, and also obviously the flat tracker scene as well. I think, you know, it's pretty unique. There's not many bikes like this. Um, so it's totally different. You know, in my opinion, I think it's dead bold. I think it's really fresh. Um, and I think it's a very, very exciting motorcycle from the way it looks to the way it performs. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. But, you know, just the opening thoughts, I guess, that I've got. If you're sort of, you've been in motorcycling a while and you've had a load of different bikes, you've done the four cylinder thing, you've done sports bikes, you're not quite ready for a Bonneville or a, or a Royal Enfield or something like that. You need a bit more go this is going to light your air basically this is going to light your fire again i think this is a massively exciting bike and if you're getting sort of bored of motorcycling hey you know i think i've found the right bike for you this is a tremendously exciting motorcycle so what's this bike like well if i was to characterize this bike i would say it's hulk hogan basically in a motorbike it's mr t you know, if this was a car, it definitely wouldn't be a Ferrari. It'd be a Dodge Viper or a Mustang Shelby GT 500 or something. If it was a dog, it'd be a Doberman. You know, this is an American muscle bike. It's big, it's powerful, it's a muscle bike. You know, when you're thinking about the FTR 1200, don't think about sort of like Japanese um, sophistication and refinement. And that's not to say it's not refined, but that's just not what the bike's about. This is a loud, proud muscle bike, basically. And if you're thinking along those lines with regards to this bike, you're kind of on the right track to actually what it really is and what it rides like too. So in line with that, I don't think this bike is for the faint hearted and I don't think it's for the new rider either. You know, you get off this bike and you think it's a beast, it's mental. And that's kind of part of its attraction. You know, like I love bikes like the R9T from BMW. And I think, you know, on a racetrack, if you'd put the two side by side, I think probably dynamically the R9T or something like that would be probably a bit faster actually because it's just a bit more balanced in the corners and stuff but I don't get off an R9T and think oh, I've just lived you know whereas a bike like this I don't uh, you know I come off it and I think oh, I've not only had my air blown back I've had my air blown off it's absolutely thrilling this is a characterful and exciting motorcycle it's raw it's a bit snappy it's a bit on the edge and it 
to be honest, it just sticks two fingers up to sort of like modern motorcycle refinement, electronic aids, and I love this about the FTR. So in terms of the engine, it's an absolute cracker. It's a 1200cc V-twin. It's got 120 horsepower and 87 foot-pound of torque. But honestly, it just the specs don't tell the story, in, in my opinion, on this bike. The way that this bike surges um, through that roll-on power performance is, is incredible. And I haven't personally experienced a bike that sort of delivers that like, unbelievable performance um, in the way that this bike does. And actually so much so that we thought, do you know what? It'd be really interesting to see how it would perform against another bike that we've got. And the most talky, the most grunty uh, bike that we've got ourselves is a Z1000SX, which is Jeff's bike. And you know, that, in my opinion, is a massively fast bike. It's really grunty. The way that Jeff rides it, he, he rides it on the torque. So, you know, he'll overtake in sixth gear, fifth gear, all that kind of stuff. He rides it quite lazy. And actually, do you know what? On spec sheet, they're pretty similar. I think the Z1000SX has got 81 foot pound of torque. This has got 87. And the Z1000 has got 140 versus uh, 120 brake horsepower. Obviously, totally chalk and cheese bikes, but it's the closest we could get. So we thought we'd do a roll-on performance comparison. And I'm gonna stick that in the screen right now and you can see what happened. So effectively, what you're seeing is that the FTR basically beats it in almost every setting. I think fifth gear was the closest. F uh, sixth gear, uh, this won the game, and in fourth gear, this one as well. And I think the only place that the Z1000SX sort of beat it was when we had this uh, FTR in fourth and the Z1000 in third gear. So it really shows you the amount of grunt this bike has. And yeah, it, it's just ballistic. Between sort of like 30 to 80, 90 mile an hour, this thing is bonkers. So over the last couple of months, basically we haven't had much rain at all. It's been unbelievably good for the UK. But when we first got the bike in February, it was quite wet. And I had heard uh, Chris North over on the Bike World channel talking about this bike and how, it could, how he could power slide it in the wet. Um, and honestly, when I saw that review, I just thought he was talking absolute crap because I know that Chris Northover is a really good rider and is he just sort of showing off basically. Well, do you know what? I, I can confirm in the wet, and I'm not sure whether we've got actually video clips of us doing it, but it totally rides like that. It's, it's unbelievable. You come out of a, a corner or something like that and you give it a fistful of throttle and I tell you what, the rear wheel just lights up. Uh, and you start power sliding, it's unbelievable, like nothing else I've ever ridden. You know, there's something to do with the engineering, where perhaps it's the long swing arm, the, the way that the weight is low. You know, the fact that this bike is sort of built off a tra flat tracker type heritage, plus that gutsy engine, as soon as you come out and you've got, um, of course, it's not got a massive amount of rear wheel grip as well, coming out of a corner in the wet, you just light the thing up but it's really manageable it sounds scary and you know the first time that i actually did it it did take me by surprise but there's something about this bike that actually makes it a lot easier and a lot more controllable than you would ever think it would be you know when someone talks about it basically and i think that just adds to the excitement of this bike and it totally brings in a, a different dimension to riding in the wet than i've ever experienced before and on the back of that point this bike does an absolutely banging burnout it does a wicked rolling burnout and i think it's sort of based on the same characteristics as uh you know it, it's benefit for the power slide it's really easy to do a rolling burnout, dead controlled, dead manageable, and you can light that rear tire up, no problems. At the same time, I think that sort of ergonomics, um, while making it better for power sliding and better for rolling burnouts and stuff, this isn't the easiest bike to, to wheelie. Of course you can get it up there, there's loads of grunt, but you know, you crack that throttle, and most of the time it just goes to the horizon. It doesn't go up in the air like you think it might. And just in my experience, it's not the easiest bike to wheelie. I think it's a bit too snatchy. It's, you know, perhaps the swing arm's too long or something like that. I just don't think it's a great wheelie bike, basically. But power slides, rolling burnouts, no problems. 
So this model is the standard FTR 1200 model. So it doesn't actually come with any traction control. You've got no rider modes or anything like that. Um, you've got no anti-wheelie. You have got ABS. Um, and you haven't got that TFT that you guys might have seen if you're sort of interested in this bike. It's got a clock uh, type display. Honestly, in my opinion, if I was looking for this uh, to the FTR 1200, this would probably be the one that I would stump for because the kind of fact that it's not got the electronics and it's not got the big TFT dash and all that information and stuff like that. I think actually that really fits the reasons that I personally would be buying this as a raw muscle bike, basically. So this would be the one that I would choose uh, if I was looking for to buy this bike. Now, the perception is of American type cars, muscle cars, Harley Davidson, stuff like that, is that they don't handle very well. You know, they're good at going in straight lines, squirt and stop and turn and then squirt again kind of thing. Actually, the FTR handles pretty well. Um, I think there's probably more agile bikes out there. I think there's probably lighter steering bikes and probably bikes that have got a bit more uh, grip and a bit more confidence inspiring. But honestly, I think it does a fantastic job of handling um, way better than what I had in mind. I think it's pretty stiffly sprung. Um, I think it's really stable in the corners. Yeah, you can get a good lick on with this bike. And you know, we've, 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 we've done some of that ourselves and the handling really good very happy with it uh, on the brakes the brakes you've got a full suite of brembo brakes you've got 320 mil disc up the front really strong calipers at the front and it does a great job of stopping the uh the ftr 1200 you know this is a, a bike that's 240 kilos and it's a freaking animal in terms of its performance so it needs good brakes and when you slam the anchors on on this bike it does a great job of doing it as well uh, same for the rear does a good job so the tyres fit to the bike are the Dunlop DT3 tyres and I think if you were looking to improve the handling of this bike in any area, in any single area, you wanted a bit more confidence in corners and stuff, I think that would be the area where you would look to change. You would look to put a set of grippier rubber on it basically. but. It's a tough one that really because actually that might sort of take out some of the flat trackery fun element of it and the power sliding in the wet and rolling burnouts and all that kind of stuff you know part of the thing is that this is this is a raw bike and sort of having a little bit less grip on the rear just kind of plays into that and i think you know this tire could have or, or the, this tire match with the bike could come under some criticism but i think if you really start to understand what this bike is and sort of take it for that i think it's actually it's a pretty good match another cool thing about this bike is that actually the fuel tank is not where you'd think it was you think it's up here like a normal motorbike actually it's under the seat here so what that does is it uh, is designed to lower the weight of the bike and i think that's a really cool feature so you've got you know some other stuff going on here perhaps some electronics i haven't had the covers off to be fair but you know it's not a tank that's the tank it's quite clever the other thing that this has got is cruise control i haven't used the cruise control on this bike um, not the way we've been riding it anyway but i'm sure it works great now the exhaust system on the ftr 1200 i actually really like it and to be honest if i was going to buy this bike i'd just leave it on i think it looks great i think it does a great job i actually think it sounds really mint as well this this uh, this exhaust system but I, at the same time i'm really reliably informed by uh, a few people to be honest but also one of our knox dealers who's also an indian um, dealer that if you put a full system on it and they're selling the full systems to go with this bike they really unlock another load of performance um, as well. I'm sure noise to go with it, but they un unlock uh, quite a lot of performance. Um, so the inference is that this exhaust system is quite restrictive. Uh, and Based on the enthusiasm that the dealer had about doing that, I kind of think, yeah, okay, you're gonna get quite a lot of performance upgrade with a full system. Also, our friends from Jekyll and Hyde exhaust, um, they've actually just come up with a system for this bike as well so um, their exhausts are really really cool because they have um, different noise settings so basically you can be totally loud and proud when you want to be you know you're out in the countryside or you're in a meet up or something like that you can roll up with a you know a trombone of an exhaust um, 
but then when you pull out in your house um, you can turn it right down so that you're not going to uh, cheese the neighbors off too much so that's available as well some exciting exhaust options available for the FTR 1200 so in our motorcycle reviews we try and be super honest about them you know of course we're going to be positive we don't test any bike without being positive about it already because you know these things take us a long time to do and you know i don't want to be killing knocking me pan in reviewing bikes that i don't even like you know it's just not what we're up for doing but at the same time we want to be honest as well in the three months that we've had it i feel like you know we've probably found a couple of things that i'd probably want to share um, in that regard um, so the first thing is that the battery keeps going flat now as i say we've had the bike for about three months the battery has been flat about three or four times in that period I've never had a bike like it ever. The, the battery keeps going flat unless there's some other underlying reason for it. Um, it's just, you know, crazy. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe it's a fault with the battery we've got and I'll hold my hands up and say if it, uh, you know, is a mistake if it is. But, you know, maybe it's to do with something that the, that the motor takes a lot of turning over. You know, they're gonna be big cylinders uh, to, to, to turn over. Maybe it takes a lot of charge out of the battery to get that. But yeah, it's a total pain in the butt. The other thing is obviously it's a, cause it's such a big motor and it's quite heavy as well. I ain't gonna be able to bump start it. You know, it's not gonna be like a four cylinder where you just run down the road and jump on it and bump start it. You know, it's gonna be a lot harder to turn over this bike. And I just know from experience, I'm not gonna be able to do that. So that's a pain. The cool thing about it though, is that the battery is really, really easily accessible. And it also comes with a little Allen key under the bottom. So you can just take the battery cover off and then charge it straight away. It's one of the easiest accessible uh, batteries that I've ever uh, worked with. So. That's kind of a plus side on that. Second point is it really doesn't run well in the cold. Now I'm not, you know, this time of year, no problems, but in the winter and in colder conditions, this bike really, really doesn't like the cold. Um, up until it's about 60 degrees, it's unrideable. And what do I mean by that? I mean, literally, if this bike is in the cold and it's under 60 degrees, you blip that throttle and the motor just cuts off, you know, so there is no riding it. It's unrideable because the motor keeps cutting off. So in the cold, you've got to turn it on and leave it until it's 60 degrees. Again, I've never had that with a motorcycle either, but you know, it's a big twin. Maybe I'm just not in the right marketplace for it, but, uh, or haven't been, um, but that's an interesting quirk. Third point is, this, this bike drinks fuel, you know, and I've not done any scientific sort of uh, evaluation on, on how much fuel economy you're getting out of it, but it's just a gut feeling. I'm like constantly at the uh, petrol station with this bike. You know, you fill it up and it seems to sort of go through fuel really quickly. And the way that you kind of access the fuel, I'm constantly getting like petrol flying back at me as well. I think because it's under the seat and the kind of hose for it almost, you know, snakes under here. You know, you've got to be a bit careful about how you're sticking the fuel in and it burns through it pretty quick as well. But, you know, it's not a big, it's not a biggie. It's just a sort of uh, a thing that is a, a, a very minor downside out of thought. And then the last couple of things is, you know, and I'm only putting this in because it's the kind of stuff that we get in YouTube comments and stuff. But obviously the rear pillion seat, you know, it's not great, but that is not what the bike's designed for. I mean, I've done like, what, 10 miles on the back of this bike. It's not great yet. You, your knees are up in the air, you know, and if you're thinking, oh, you know what, I'm gonna do a European trip with my wife on the back of this bike, on a, that's just not gonna work for you basically but it's not what the bike is designed for, um, but it's the kind of thing that we get asked uh, for. And the other thing, it's not for everybody. It's, it's definitely not gonna be for everyone, this bike. If you're like a new rider or you've just passed your test, you've just done your A2 or you know, you're getting into your full license, I think this, I would steer you away from this bike. I think it's probably too raw, too aggressive. You know, this is a bike for, more experienced riders who sort of want to get excited again about motorcycling and want to get their juices flowing again that's what this bike is for in my opinion shoot me down if you think i'm wrong but 
that's that's where and i'm not pigeonholing the bike i i think it's fantastic that it's that i think it's fantastic that you can stick two fingers up at modern refinement and just say here's a muscle bike i love it i absolutely love the bike so that's been our review of the Indian FTR 1200. As you can tell, I'm a massive fan. We, me and Jeff are massive fans of this bike. Absolutely love it. So please like, please subscribe to the channel. Please comment as well. I'd love to hear uh, what you think about this bike and other stuff that we're doing. Also, if you can uh, click your notification bell, that's going to notify you when we have another video go live. And we'll see you next time.